performed this evening by the Mustang Band. Welcome you to Dallas, Texas, inside Moody Coliseum for a midweek matchup in the American. The Mustangs of SMU welcome to town the Bearcats of Cincinnati. We take a look at this matchup between Cincinnati and SMU. Cincinnati riding a three-game winning streak. SMU looking for their first win since their last home matchup when they were able to topple the Pirates of ECU. Hi, everyone. Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck. And, Coach, we take a look at this matchup. It's Cincinnati still trying to continue to climb the standings as they have for the past couple of weeks in the absence of Nakira Goings, of all things, while Travis Mays' Mustang still looking to overcome some early obstacles this year, trying to find that chemistry, trying to find the winning formula. Cincinnati's only one game out of second place in the American, so they come in with a great deal of confidence. They have five players that can hurt you any single night, so that makes a coach very confident. Then you look at SMU, they've got Adams, but they need Cash, they need Perry, they need Collins, they need Bradshaw, they need Whitfield, somebody to come up and step up big tonight and make this a big game. Had a chance to talk to Jamel Elliott during the week prior to this ball game. Uh, take a look at her keys to this matchup this evening on the road. Well, obviously they want to contain Adams. They, they know that she does it all for them right now. And then they want to get out in transition because they like to run and gun and they want, they want to make these guys get back in defensive transition. And across the way for Travis Mays and the Mustangs, how do they get back on track? Well, they got to get their posts involved. They say they have this great high-low game, but their posts aren't touching it. And then they got to mix up their defenses. Sometimes when things go wrong, they stay in the same defense. They got to mix it up tonight. We take a look at some of the players to watch. Hard to believe Anna Owens, already a senior back in the day, thrown into the fire as a true freshman, but has really been up to the task each and every year. Well, she has, and she's developed, and she's put in that body of work that makes her a great manager of the game. And when you have a great point guard like her, you're going to go a long way in this conference. Meanwhile, everyone in Dallas, a big sigh of relief after being unable to finish their last outing with an injury. Mackenzie Adams is good to go here tonight. Well, she is a blue-collar worker. She's getting it done blue-collar-wise. She is working hard for the money. She's going hard to the rim. She's supposed to be a set three-point shooter, but she's taking it off the dribble, off the pass, and she's bulldozing people down to score points for SMU. Mustangs and Bearcats tangled tonight in Big D, looking for a victory here in the American on ADN. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Introductions underway here inside Moody Coliseum. Again, the Mustangs and Bearcats squaring off for the first time. Eighth all-time meeting between these two members of the American. SMU has the slight edge, taking four of the first seven meetings. We take a look at the starting lineups for both Travis Mays and Jamel Elliott. You take a look at Travis Mays. He's going to go with John Asia for a second straight game. The freshman in the post, but they'll have plenty of size coming off the bench as well. She did a good job on her last start. Had 10 rebounds. Uh, I think about six points. So she did contribute. She banged the boards a little bit. And I think she gives them a lot of energy. Uh, it's another game for a six straight outing that the Bearcats are without Nakira Goings. They thought there was a slight chance she might be available today but I think they're more confident that this weekend she will rejoin the Bearcats. Let's check in for the first time today with the third member of our broadcast crew Megan Trammell. 
Today's matchup is a hot streaking Cincinnati team versus an MSMU team that's still struggling to find that identity. I caught up with Cincinnati's head coach Elliot and she said, you know, we just need to get that ball inside offensively and we have to be aggressive in guarding the high-low defense. On the opposite side of the court, Coach Mays told me that his team has to be confident Yeah, thank you, Megan. Obviously, every coach, when they see SMU on the schedule, is mindful, first and foremost, of the size advantage that SMU has on most of their opponents. And we'll see if that poses any problems here for the Bearcats on the road. They started out with a actually a more athletic lineup than their size, so I think they're wanting to run and gun a little bit here early. Ball will stay on this end. So without Nakira Goings, that's 13 points, four this rebounds a ball game area. they have missed, although she did practice on Tuesday as well as today. It's the sixth straight game she's missed. Well, they lost the first two that she was absent from, but they've won now three straight have the Bearcats here in challenging conference play. Well, she coach seemed to be pretty happy that if, if it had to happen, it happened in a positive way because she got more minutes for Parker and Livingston. Mustang strike first, the three-pointer out of the right hand of the homegrown Kira Perry here in Dallas. And that is a nice start for the Mustangs as they lead 3-0 here a minute into the opening quarter. Cincinnati showing a lot of patience versus this 1-2-2. Two, two. Oh, nice extra pass out to the wing, and we are even. A sweet stroke from Sam Rogers. We mentioned about homegrown talent, the sophomore from Cincinnati. She's got a nice follow-through on the three-pointer and uh, has a 38% average there. And that is our first miss from downtown so far tonight in a walk on Deja Thomas after the offensive rebound. Deja, last time we saw her on this court, tied the program mark with 22 rebounds. You see the three a moment ago. As the Bearcats, they've struggled some from downtown this year, but look good there. Well, I'll take that walk any day. Deja Thomas gets on those offensive boards because they got beat in the last game on the offensive glass, and, it, and that's their game. Well, it was that same spot we saw Sam Rogers this time around. It's Maya Benham. The junior was just one of 11 from beyond the arc this year before that one. It's kind of surprising. It's not what they're known for, the three-point shooting. They're known for going inside with two of their players shooting 60%. But if they're going to shoot like that early on the road, I'm sure that Cincinnati's happy. We have not seen a shot inside the arc as of yet. A promising start here in this midweek matchup. Now from the opposite wing, as it won't go, Thomas tries to save it, stays with the Bearcats. So it looks like Coach Elliott said, you know, if they're going to play us in a 1-2-2, two, two, let's rock and fire from the corner. That's one of the weaknesses of a 1-2-2 two, two, is deep in those corners. Last six points belong to the Bearcats here. Looking to add more here onto their initial advantage. Very little dribbling, good ball reversal by Cincinnati early. Fired into congestion and ultimately stolen by Cash. And the post player goes coast to coast, cannot finish. And the rebound just a tad tall for McKenzie Adams. Great steal, great, great transition, but jump stop. You know, make that shot. Cash was showing some handles. Opposite end, puts a hand in the face, but the stroke good from Shanice Johnson. Johnson just under 10 points a night, six rebounds, three assists. Such a well-rounded senior here for Cincinnati this year. And Cash from the elbow will bank it in. Well, there's that high-low game that everyone talks about that we don't see a whole lot of, but Cash can take that shot, so they're going to have to get out on her. Opposite in, Bears may not, Bearcats may not have the size advantage, but they have the quickness there as Angel Riser, the sophomore, comes through. Again, great to see Mackenzie Adams. She went down with a late injury the other day against S uh, pardon me, against UCF in Orlando, and we did not know to what degree that injury would be. Kept her out for the remainder of that fall game as SMU would fall, uh, but great to see that she was ready to go soon after and, of course, back in the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, we saw the ankle kind of 
Ebert, Eversion, is that a word? Uh, it, it will be. It, yeah, it's a new one. Uh, but then, then the knee was what she was really focused on, so that was that was kind of uh, scary. But yes, I agree. Great to see that she's good and that she needs to be for them right now. She has picked up the slack this year, scoring almost 18 points a ball game. And good rotation from Bearcats. Shot clock, plenty of time left, 10 seconds. Along the baseline, low power dribble. And Cash holds her ground following the miss from Johnson. Perry had the three that got the scoring started tonight. And Whitfield off the mark. Rebound to Miller. Oh, nice job cutting inside. You see Collins has already come into the ball game for SMU in the post. Travis Mays has not waited very long this year traditionally to go to his bench for the first time as Adams off the mark. Well, I love that transition bucket, though. They finally penetrated in deep enough to give... Adams a free shot. Kenzie Adams puts her head down, gets her own rebound. Now, when I did that in youth basketball, they called me for traveling because, frankly, it didn't look like a legitimate shot. Yeah, well, she likes to throw that up there. I mean, you you got to stop her, and you can't you can't just keep riding her down there because she's going to take it. And she goes back. I said she's a blue collar worker. She is. You see the profile of, of the former UConn Husky, Jamel Elliott as she has enjoyed some great success. Last year was one of the best years that Cincinnati has had in over a decade when they won 16 ball games, including seven in the American, tying fifth in the conference. Jamel Elliott spent this uh, past summer as a court coach for the USA U23 women's national team. And she spent, you know, a long time with Gino. And anytime you can take all that knowledge She's developed some of the greatest post players in the country, and she has a couple of them shooting 60% from the field. So she, she has a huge impact on what they're doing, and it's impressive. And Bearcats will dip into their bench. Across the way, the always dapper Travis Mays with his trademark bow tie. Second year as a head coach, both coming at SMU, the former Texas Longhorn, part of BMW, where he was the M. Yeah, I don't think he's quite playing the exact style he wants to, but um, sooner or later they're going to get their transition game going and, and get their man-to-man -man defense put in. Step inside, won't go, and ultimately the Bearcats have numbers for the rebound. Travis Mays, longtime assistant on some very successful women's basketball programs. Uh, 16 footer, good. And Cincinnati will double up SMU here early on. It is a 12 to 3 run for the visitors. I like that. It was a different set for them. They used a high post screen for Anna, and she just stroked it, just took, came right off that screen and, and uh, put that shot down. Just about a three-minute drought for the Mustangs. And no longer. Able to dial up and open Ariana Whitfield as the freshman from Cy Ranch out of the Houston area. This year, first year in college, averaging just about seven points, four rebounds. And we'll get a touch foul on SMU. So 3.44 still to go in the opening quarter. Just a three-point ball game separates Travis Mays' Mustangs and Jamel Elliott's Bearcats. It's SMU in Cincinnati on this Wednesday night in Dallas. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American.
miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Bohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. First quarter underway, Cincinnati up 12 to 9. A reminder of American women's basketball coming up on the horizon. UCF at Tulsa this weekend. And the newest members of the American, the Shockers of Wichita State, venture over to North Carolina to take on the Pirates of ECU. We'll see the Shockers then host uh, Coach Huey's impressive Houston Cougars program this year. Memphis will then meet Houston and then UCF against Temple as we'll get midway into February. How are we already talking about midway into February? Soon enough, we'll be talking about early March, the conference tournament up in Connecticut. And this season goes by quickly. I feel the same way. I was looking at the uh, standings, and, it, you know, we're almost mid-season mid, mid already. And uh, there's a big pack of people right there, you know, vying for a spot. So, I mean, a lot of teams are just one game out, and it's a fight. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. And... Coach, this game got started with some hot shooting from beyond the arc. Well, it did, and uh, it's uh, both teams, Cincinnati and SMU, came out of firing, and, and they needed to because SMU was given Cincinnati, basically saying you're going to have to beat us from the outside. They're going to clog up their inside game, and I would too because they're shooting over 60%, but with two players on the inside, and they like to pound it down low. I mentioned this earlier again. Maya Benham is only averaging two points a ball game in her 18 games this year. Was just one of 11 from beyond the arc, but she saw everybody else having so much fun. Uh, she fired one through for her first triple tonight. Well, Coach must have known something. She starts her, and uh, I guess she, you know, she probably is the defensive stopper, and they don't care if she scores or not. They've got plenty of kids to score. She pulls the trigger on that inbounds play. Cincinnati hanging on to just a three-point lead right now. I think at this point, you have to have quality shots, and you have to be efficient, and they seem to be very efficient, Cincinnati. Nice job by Collins denying the baseline as they go out and offensive rebound, second chance points, courtesy of Angel Riser. Well, that was a timely rebound, but it's not by mistake. These guys are great offensive rebounders, and she's the best, uh, second best rebounder on the team. Both Cash and Collins on the floor. Collins at six foot five. John Asia Cash at 6'2", really trying to flex their size advantage. This will be a long two straight away and good from Whitfield. That's the second one for Whitfield, and, and the, the, I'm sure he told her, you know, we got to have something from you, and, and it's good to see her stroke those. And Whitfield, the freshman, called for the foul on the opposite end. Yep, she just got into a rhythm and caught and shot, so, I mean, there's no hesitation there. Last time we saw SMU here in Dallas, they toppled ECU 65-51, but losses at Wichita State and at UCF. Trying to get back on track. Meanwhile, Cincinnati not making any excuses for the absence of Nakira Goings, their most improved player arguably coming into this year, and had emerged as their top scorer. And that one just mismeasured, rebound down to Riser. That's an example of not being aggressive enough. I mean, that's a one. I mean, that's a one-on-one, -on -one, and now they go down and give them a three-point shot. That's a, that's at least a, a five-point turnaround right there, with a, you know a, a poor shot selection. Anna Owens able to connect. Owens has done a great job managing her teammates while out there on the court, and a steal by Riser. Goes right into the body, and the layup is good for Antoinette Miller. Well, that's the difference. You've got to be aggressive. SMU has got to get the ball to the hole. Off the dribble penetration, they've got to attack Cincinnati's bodies and not go around them. Cash, one of two freshmen on the floor right now for Travis Mays. The other one you saw bringing the ball up the court, Morgan Smith from Dallas's Highland Park High School down the road. And Cincinnati on a little run, establishing an eight-point lead. After watching SMU in the last few games, they, they settle for that jump shot a lot. And against good rebounding teams like Cincinnati, you're going to most more than likely be one and done. So you can't really do that. You have to reverse the ball. You have to attack off the dribble or get a more quality shot off the post. 
Deja Thomas has been fairly quiet in her last two outings on the road after being such a big catalyst with a career night in scoring, rebounding, and assists against ECU in that win. And away from her, they go to Kira Perry, who's off the mark. Bearcats looking to grow their largest lead of the night. Long strides goes right at Collins, but the Australian able to win that one. Well, that was a good defensive effort and a good block by Collins. As Michaela Rees keeps this ball in play, the freshman Smith pulls it back out. And that one poked out of bounds by Cincinnati. Well, we talk about Cincinnati being on the road tonight, but really they're never truly home. Their current arena under renovation this year, so their home away from home primarily has been at a private school, a high school, a smaller gym. If they hadn't found that, they could always go over to Washington, D.C., the home of Jamel Elliott growing up, where her middle school renamed the gym and court in her honor this past summer. And she's got no excuses. I mean, if, if they win, they win, and if they lose, they lose, but it's not about the gym. It's, you know, she's, she's excited to play wherever they can. And the most recent three-point attempt off the mark from the Bearcats. Reese has been pretty hot in the last few games. She came in, she's coming in now at the point. I'd like to see her get on target for SMU. Now, leader from 15 off the mark doesn't hit anything. Last couple times down, Cincinnati's gotten their hand on one of their passes every, every single time. So they've got to fake a pass to make a pass. They've got to get separation from the defense. And, and move the basketball. So the Bearcats in Dallas tonight looking for a fourth straight victory, an eight point lead to show for the opening 10 minutes of play. You're watching American That's women's number basketball number tonight on the American Digital Network. Bearcats with the edge going into quarter number two. Kentley Shrighton Thong over to first. In time, double play, and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Mentioned Cincinnati not making any excuses. They've won their last three games in the absence of Nikira Goings, who we did not anticipate being available today. In fact, we can tell you number two hasn't played, but number 50 has. She's wearing the number 50 today. She is available. And in a moment, we'll have a chance to check in with Megan Trammell. And let's go ahead and send a court sign. Megan. Well, guys, the star player for Cincinnati, Nakira Goings, is back in the game tonight. And you're right, Lincoln, she's wearing number 50, not number two. That's because her jersey was left in Cincinnati accidentally. She's missed five games. 
due to that sprained ankle, but they said she got in practice Tuesday. She's now able to put full pressure on, but she's not in game shape, so her limits, her minutes will be limited tonight. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Megan. Yeah, they missed her early on. They lost their first two games in her absence, but again, she is a young lady who last year could be anywhere from your third score, your fourth score, your fifth score. This year, to start off the season, fantastic. She was the leading scorer uh, up until that injury, 13 points, four rebounds a ball game. And uh, as Megan reminded us, she started practicing Tuesday, looked better and better. And so sure enough, here she is with the basketball. It'll be interesting to watch her. She looks a little bit gimpy right now, but she, you know, coaches is just wanting to get her legs underneath her right now, let her get into some game shape. As Deja Thomas will haul in the rebound. And going right down the middle, but block shot flat-footed by Angel Riser. Goings. Good. Well, you don't need too many feet for that. That's, uh, you know, she's just catching and shooting and pulling the trigger. She's their best three-point shooter, 43% from downtown. SMU's being their own worst enemy here. Uh, they don't have, they have zero points in the paint. They're not really being very patient on offense. And, uh, you know, they're not shooting the ball extremely well because they're, they're settling. And so until they start pounding it in, attacking the basket, um, it's going to be a long night. And Goings, the junior out of Marietta, Georgia. As Clara Branshaw will come on for the Mustangs. The former TCU Horn Frog at six feet six replaces Stephanie Collins. So Mustangs get an inch taller. First touch for Bradshaw off the bench. We've seen Cash, Collins, and Bradshaw all play in the post. Complimented by Deja Thomas. And a shot clock violation by SMU. Well, if you watch, every time Adams gets the basketball, they're double teaming her. And that's a great a strategy by Coach Elliott. Anywhere she goes, she's going to get two. So somebody's going to be open but they can't get it to her. Yeah, when we talked to Coach Elliott, obviously Adams, when we talked about the game plan, was the first name out of her mouth when addressing the Mustangs, and that is common now that Alicia Froling not available this year with injury. They can focus on number three for the Mustangs, who's, again, averaged about 18 points a ball game, but needs more help from her teammates. So a shot clock violation, the last trip down here for SMU, trailing by 11. Extra pass, Thomas goes baseline, contact, but she went up, got some contact, came back down. Instead of the foul, it'll be called a travel. Yeah, she's super frustrated, but here she takes one and then two, three steps. Now, if, she, if she'd have taken a jump stop, that wouldn't have been a travel, but she took a, a little two-hop step. And just a nice pocket, but the shot won't fall. Rebound to Reese. Kayla Reese finds Adams now in her third and final year with the Mustangs. As the senior will go to shoot the first free throws of the night. I don't think there's probably anyone in the American that's gone to the line as much as this girl right here. So she does not shy away from going inside. She's extremely strong for her size, and she's fearless. Adams 0 for 3 from the field today. It is 1 of 2 from the charity stripe, now 2 of 3. Back into the lineup for Cincinnati number 20. If, if SMU had a little more continuity in their offense, you know, I know coaches trying to get them to reverse it and move it. I, I think they could get a lot of shots, but they're just a little bit stubborn about moving that basketball. Kenzie Adams with three points is the only Mustang currently on the court that has scored. All coming from the free throw line. Meanwhile, seven of the eight Bearcats we've seen tonight have already entered the box score in the scoring column. Coach said on any given night, she doesn't know who's going to have a big night. Well, she made it clear the bench, which she affectionately called the B team, B being short for bench, has been the MVP during this last three-game stretch of victories. Well, yeah, it's, everyone's contributing. That was Shanice Johnson with just a nifty high-low pass inside, a little touch pass. Reese spawned up three, no. And Adams with the rebound. 
Again, the freshman Smith in for a closer look will shot put one, and ultimately the rebound comes down to Riser. Nice job by the Mustangs getting back defensively, but a foul call, no basket. Well, that was kind of a smart move there. She knows Smith's a freshman. She's going to challenge her to defend her and attack the basket. And here she goes, and she kind of puts a little hesitation step and uh, gets a foul. And the freshman Smith will take a seat along with Deja Thomas. Bradshaw with the rebound, and now a foul out of frustration by the Bearcats after the miss from Riser. Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati with a chance possibly to get back into the postseason this year. Their last trip was to the WNIT back in 2012. Mentioned last year you saw a great deal of progress under Coach Elliott. That was her eighth season in Cincinnati as they were able to have a 16-win season. Cash, her own rebound, put back, won't go. Free throws coming up. I think there's a lid on that basket because that was a great move by Cash. She rebounds it and puts it back, but she just kind of outquicks herself here. Right? Or, you know, that was a little touch there by Johnson. Johnson's a good looking player. Shanice Johnson, big, strong. Uh, she's a tough, tough looking player. It is Johnson who picks up the foul that has Cash at the line. John Asia Cash a little banged up uh, coming out of her senior year of high school this offseason. So slow to get up to speed here at the collegiate level. But Travis Mays about a week ago said she's really starting to hit her stride. And that has corresponded with starting now these last two games for SMU as a freshman. SMU has trimmed it back to a single digit deficit at home. Bearcats have four triples already, and the fifth one so close, instead an offensive rebound. And a walk will be whistled on Benham. That's a good call by the officials. They're not letting you scooty scoot your feet. You gotta stick your, your pivot foot, and here she slides that foot and picks it up, and that's a travel. Good call. Cash just fires one up as it falls into the arms of Benham. I think one more dribble, she has her at the hole, but she just kind of bailed out of that. Nice adjustment, good feed, but it's hard to contend with somebody who's flat footed. At six foot six, and you imagine you tack on that wingspan as well here for Bradshaw with the block. That's a great block by Bradshaw. She even left the ground. They'll go back inside at Bradshaw. Well, that's where they would prefer to have it on the interior, but SMU's doing a good job of keeping it out of there. Well, give Reese credit, and she got a hand on that pass, then Adams helped tie it up. There'll be a turnover on Cincinnati back over to SMU. So 5.15 to go. I mean, they just got to make a little run here. Have a couple efficient quarter-court series. Move the basketball. 17-footer won't go. That's Genesis Parker trying to make something happen. The transfer from Virginia Tech, now a sophomore. See, if I'm having a film session right now, I'm saying, hey, we can get a better shot than that. We can get that shot anytime in the 30, 30 seconds. Bearcats basketball when we come back. With it, they'll have a nine-point lead here in Dallas. And Cincinnati looking to improve to five and two by the end of tonight here in the American. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni. 
rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Take a look at where we stand here in late January now. Of course, no surprise there at the top. A couple of top 25 programs, the Huskies and Bulls leading the way. After there, you see Coach Abe over in Orlando with UCF. They have continued to climb, as have these Bearcats now into your top four in the American. It's an exciting race. I mean, look at, look at the numbers. No, no one's more than what, three games out. So it's early, but you got to make a run right now. This is a conference that better take advantage of Wichita State still transitioning with a new head coach because that is a program that regularly records 20 wins a season and they will be a foe and already have won more than they've lost early on. I always felt as a coach it was hard to, to play a team that had a new coach because you buy into everything and you're all energized and you're it's not that anything bad about your old coach but you're so excited to have this and impress this new coach and and they're difficult to play so i think that you know which is going to be in the mix here for a long time yeah Ranji bassard and company have done a nice job with their first year head coach kiva adams the longtime great over at utep well and then she happens to be impressive so uh her x and o ability is is uh pretty high. Cincinnati with a nine point lead. You could point to the fact in the transition ball game, they're outscoring SMU 10-0 on fast break points. They have seven assists on ten made field goals here in the opening half. Yeah, eight points in the paint versus none for SMU. I mean, I mean we talked about SMU's post game a lot, but they really aren't touching the ball. I don't see the post getting the touches that they need in order to score. So I'd like to see them move the basketball and go down low a little bit. It's now the second SMU foul on this possession. Stephanie Collins back on, the senior in for the freshman cash. So now he's going to the bigs. He's got 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, in. Hopefully they get to see the ball on the offensive end. In a fresh shot clock for the Bearcats. Mustangs defense doing a nice job, and Collins had to close on the post. Of course, she could do so with her 6 6 teammate Bradshaw underneath to rebound. See that that uh, sequence right there. Perry comes over where, where Bradshaw's at. If they throw to Bradshaw, she's got a high-low opportunity. Mustangs have not scored in the last two minutes, but it's been a slow stretch for Cincinnati as well as this remains as a nine-point lead for the Bearcats. We've seen a lot of different looks from Cincinnati. We've seen a 1-3-1 as far as the offense goes. Now they have a four-out one in. They try to screen the top of the zone. There's the open look just off the mark out of the left hand of Parker. Well, Coach Travis Mays has kind of made a decision like, hey, Cincy, you're going to have to shoot from the outside. And early on, it looked like that was going to be a bad decision, but right now they've missed the last few three-pointers that they've attempted. Yeah, Bearcats have shot 14, made four. So he has taken that superior inside game away. Now, if they could just hit a few on this end. Inside of four minutes here in the second quarter. Mustangs hit the first three points of the night, but have been playing catch up ever since. And there's the open look from the corner. And it is an air ball and a foul underneath. 
on Bradshaw. Well, he probably caught off guard when that ball did not hit anything. Well, I don't think it's a, a, a fact that the posts aren't working hard, because if you watch those posts, they're working hard to get position on their man. But you have to reverse the ball in order to hit them. And once that ball goes to the high post, that low post is open. And Cincinnati is doing this for the most part without Nakira Goings. We saw her in the ball game for four minutes. Came up with three points during that stretch, but back on the bench for a, another extended breather. Long two, won't go. And they're going to, let's see if they get an over the back. Yeah. And it will be ultimately the foul on Shanice Johnson, who arguably did not have uh, the better positioning there. Yeah, she, she out jumped her, but kind of came over her back to get it. Here she is. And just, it's. And just brush the ponytail of Kira Perry. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's called the ponytail brush. Only because she plays for SMU. Adams from 16. Put back no. And that's all SMU will get this trip down. Frenetic pace here, back and forth. And you'll get Bradshaw for hooking the arm of a Bearcat looking for the rebound now. Well, it's a, it's a guard-oriented offense for SMU. The guards, if the guards are hot, they're going to win. But if not, um, it's it's not. I, I don't I don't really see why everyone's worried about the high-low game because I don't see it being a big part of what they're doing. Loose ball foul was the fifth on SMU. The reason for the free throws here. Goings back in the ball game as Warren. A little bit of a homecoming here for Chelsea, and she is from Red Oak, just outside of Dallas. Now five of eight on the year from the free throw line. And able to come through. Again, with both SMU and Houston in the conference, you're going to see more and more Texans on the rosters throughout this league. Adams. Trying to put the end to a drought and we'll go to the free throw line for a third time. That's a good drive. Weak side's there, but just a little bit late. Didn't really have positioning. Warren called for the foul as McKenzie trying to snap a four and a half minute drought for SMU. Well, you said Coach Elliott was worried about Adams and She's paid a lot of attention to her, and that's why she hasn't gotten the shots. Usually, Mackenzie Adams would be the second name out of the mouth of coaches who are scouting SMU. You saw Alicia Froling, a knee injury before the start of the season. She'll be able to redshirt and the native of Queensland, Australia. She'll be back next year as a fifth-year senior, and a lot of youth will be surrounding her. A impressive signing class for Travis Mays going into next year. And Adams, again, and the Mustangs just cannot connect from the field. Goings, again, matched up with Collins there on the perimeter. They'll work it around Collins, extra screen to help out Goings, who's off the mark. Well, she just needs to keep doing it. She doesn't quite have her legs yet. You can just tell it's a little, she's a little heavy on them, and that kind of affects your shot right now. SMU with a productive possession here all of a sudden within a couple of scores. And to Bradshaw, and she will go to the free throw line. Thank you, thank you. That's what I've been looking for right there. Amari Thomas, recently your freshman of the week in the conference, commits the foul this time, the Oakland native. That's a great feed to a big post, six foot six. And, you know, she takes it in there strong. So a little bit more of that and we could be an SMU victory. Bradshaw makes about three quarters of her free throws. 
and Travis Mays' group now back within seven. A chance to make it, a, again, a two-score ball game here with another free throw. Travis Mays last year, his debut as a head coach in Division I, took SMU to the third round of the WNIT. Offensive rebound, Adams' shot is blocked, denied by Riser, but it stays with the Mustangs. Oh, you thought, surely there's the field goal that has eluded SMU. And as I say that, the Bearcats are on a six and a half minute drought of their own from the floor. That was a good feed in by Reese, but Collins's feet were not focused on, they weren't towards the pass, so it just went out of bounds. Free throws have accounted for most of the scoring here down the stretch. And they just cannot crack that lid. Back over to the Bearcats, 33 seconds left to go here until they head to the locker room. I'll take that shot any time, though. That was a great little stutter step, hesitation, let the defense go by, but she just missed it. But that was a great shot. Adams is 0 for 7 now from the floor or otherwise. I guess if she's 0 for 7 and they're, they're only six, eight, 7 points down, I mean, that's a good thing for SMU. Sam Rogers with the free throws. 10 for 10 this year, has not missed. She's giving them five points, a couple rebounds a night. Has started each of her 17 games in the lineup this year. It's always nice to have when you're a Cincinnati native. She's played in all sorts of gyms these days now in Cincinnati. So SMU could hold for the final shot. Adams is on the board from the floor. Her that first field goal of the night. That was not an easy shot. Gives her seven for the ball game, and SMU all of a sudden could squeeze in a couple of scores here down the stretch. Added confidence for Adams, but nothing doing. Goings with the rebound. Two to shoot. Not enough time. Out of the hand, they do beat the buzzer, but won't go. It's a seven-point lead for Cincinnati heading to the locker room, looking for their fourth straight victory in the American. So Bearcats and Mustangs. A three-game winning streak for Jamel Elliott. And Cincinnati, as they have been coming off over the past couple of weeks, victories against Houston, Temple, and Memphis. Let's check in with Megan Trammell. She is with Coach Elliott. Coach, strong offensive rhythm starting in the first. What does your team have to do to extend the lead in the second? Well, we're getting wide open shots. You know, they've been in the zone for most of the first half. You know, we're getting best our shooters some good looks. I would like to see us get it inside and then out, penetrate the zone, kick it out, and then change sides of the floor. But at the end of the day, we're getting wide open shots. I think we're going to knock them down in the second half. How much can we expect to see Goings in the second? Well, her minutes today was 10 to 15. I haven't seen the stat sheet yet, uh, but their max is 15. So we'll take a look and see how many minutes she played in the first half. See how she's feeling now that we're at halftime and see what happens in the second half. Thanks for your time, Coach. Right, thank you. So Goings played seven minutes, was one of four from the floor, including a three-pointer as her Bearcats lead SMU 27-20. We head to halftime here on the American Digital Network. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Hope your Monday's off to a great start. Thanks for tuning in to an all-new episode of The Rise. I'm Haley Alton. Let's take a look at who took home this week's league honors after standout performances on the hardwood this past week. On the men's side, two players stole the show in conference play, SMU guard Shake Milton and Cincinnati forward Gary Clark. Shake Milton got last week started with a career-best 33-point performance on the road to lead his team past number seven, Wichita State, 
He then followed that performance up with a 20-point output at home against Tulane to seal off a perfect 2-0 week for the Mustangs. For Gary Clark, it was also an exceptional week, averaging a double-double with over 15 points and 14 rebounds a game. Clark led his team to wins at UCF and at home against ECU. Rookie of the Week honors went to ECU guard Sean Williams. The redshirt freshman averaged over 18 points in a 1-1 one -one week for the Pirates. He had a career-high 22 against USF and backed that up with a team-high 15 at Cincinnati. A handful of other players had impressive performances as well. Here's a look at this week's American Honor Roll. On the women's side, UConn guard Kia Nurse picked up this week's accolades. The senior averaged 18 points and shot 60% from the field in a 3-0 week for the top-ranked Huskies. In a win over number 9 Texas, Nurse had 13 points and 5 rebounds. Freshman of the Week honors went to UCF forward Masani Kaba. The freshman helped the Knights to a perfect week at home. She posted 16 points against Tulane and tallied 6 against SMU. The 5-2 mark in conference play is the Knights' best since the 2008-2009 season. And here's a look at the performances that received recognition on this week's conference honor roll. Thanks for joining us on this all-new episode of The Rise. Be sure to check back later tonight as we'll bring you an all-new episode of Mondays with Mike where we dive into the top men's basketball headlines across the league. Also keep an eye out on Wednesday for our new show called American Round Ball where we welcome in Monica McNutt to break it down on the women's side. Have a great week, everybody. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Is the chance to see your team run down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Potentially Shrek and Stalls over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here.
from the Americans. Don't miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Potentially Shrek and Saw over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Halftime in Dallas inside Moody Coliseum. Always a great venue and always a kid-friendly atmosphere at SMU. Travis Mays and before him Ronda Rompola. Always a fantastic job after games. The student athletes, even if they just played a full 40, are out there working with the kids. But they still have at least another 20 minutes to go as right now they are trailing Cincinnati 27-20 here at the half, trying to get back on track. Bearcats technically going back in the rotation. They haven't needed much from her today. Well, both teams have been kind of back and forth. I think Cincinnati came out with a little surge early, 
But SMU's done a good job of fighting back, getting some quality shots inside. Uh, they got to get back in transition in the second half. Neither team is shooting extremely well, but they're shooting from downtown better than from inside. So both defenses have done a good job of taking away their strength, which is in the paint. Both teams got off to a hot start scoring, but again, that has simmered down a bit. Cincinnati has been able to take advantage of some fast break transition opportunities after, after some long rebounds here on the road as they're looking for their fourth straight victory. You look at some of the numbers here at the half, anything stand out to you? Well, the shooting, both, both teams are shooting pretty poorly and in the fast break points, the Bearcats have 10, but the Mustangs used to run a lot more and they're not really getting out in transition as much as they used to. So again, right now, Cincinnati with that seven point lead over the Mustangs looking for a road victory. Uh, perhaps some future Mustangs right now on hand and uh, any excuse to go to the game, get some popcorn is a good one. As we mentioned, always a great atmosphere here inside Moody Coliseum. Did a fantastic job a few years ago renovating this facility. It's now been, I can't believe it, 10 years since they renovated the practice facility. And it's always gonna be a great recruiting advantage for Travis Mays. And I know that's what Jamel Elliott's looking so forward to. And, they no longer have to drive to practice off campus, but next year they can go back to home uh, in the backyard on campus. Well, the facility they're building is going to be top of the line. Recruiting is going to be amazing for her. She's not, you know, just uh, obviously somebody of her caliber that's been in USA basketball like she has. The kind of players that she's developed over her career, like Tina Charles, Swin Cash, Maya Moore, uh, she, she's proven herself to be a great coach. Funny you mentioned Swin Cash, of course, uh, a family member of hers, John Asia Cash for SMU, just a freshman. We've seen all three post players for Travis Mays, and we've noticed the in the absence of Alicia Froling, they're going more and more with the two post players trying to exploit something. I really hope they do. I, I think that, you know, 6665, these are capable posts. They just need to get possessions more. They got they have to get more touches. And I think if they could settle down and just work the ball to them, good things will happen. Let's check in with Megan Trammell. She's with SMU head coach Travis Mays. Megan? Coach, you started to get something going at the end of the second. What adjustments do you look to make in the second half? Well, I'm looking to execute on the offensive end. I think we were trying to be aggressive, but we were being too aggressive, and we were taking bad shots. We had nobody in rebounding position, and we didn't have our proper balance to even make the shot. So it looked like we were just playing proper shot. We can't beat this team. we got to have quality possessions. Thanks for your time, Coach. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Obviously, appreciate both head coaches' times there surrounding halftime. Uh, Jamel Elliott, Travis Mays, so easy to talk to. You can really see the foundation of knowledge that they have that they're able to impart with their players. Uh, they know what needs to be changed. The only question is whether that can be executed. Again, Travis Mays all season long has been trying to figure out who can help out Mackenzie Adams on a nightly basis. Well, I think that's right. And discipline is the foundation of squad morale and team unity. And you need to have discipline on the floor. And discipline is finding the proper people at the proper time, being very tough on defense. But so both teams, whoever is the most disciplined on the offensive end is going to win because neither team is shooting that well. So they need to work a little harder to find the open man. Again, Travis May has enjoyed an NBA career after playing for the Texas Longhorns in college. And then quickly jumped into the coaching ranks, embraced by a lot of the all-time greats, as he was able to learn from some of the best over the years. Cincinnati trying to reestablish this lead. A good look, second chance opportunity, second chance points. Eight now on the night for Riser. Riser has some quick ups. I mean, she gets up and down faster than anyone. So that rebound gave her her seventh of the night as well. She is filling up the box score. Here's Cash from 16, Money. Well, that's what they need, that little high post look, a post that can put that down, and she can. And just like that, SMU back within fun. First man-to-man -man defense I've seen SMU do in a few games, so good for him for mixing it up. Both Cash and Bradshaw are starting here in the second half. We saw that against UCF this weekend in Orlando as well. And pulling two right back for the Bearcats again on the road 
looking for a victory here in Dallas. Michaela Porter comes through. Or pardon me, Sam Rogers. A little stop and pop by Rogers. It, it was defended well, but she just she just uh, scored it. There's a version of the high low, and Cash can't get it to go. I'll take it though. It's a quality shot. Yeah, just mismeasuring the angle of the long rebound out to Adams. Well, you mismeasure it when you have a 6'6 person in your face. Quick release from beyond the arc, and that one will, in fact, drop through for Whitfield. Well, she's been playing well tonight, both offensively and defensively. And then we get a little turnover there. She has the team high, eight points, her second three-pointer this evening. SMU is a team three of eight now from beyond the arc. Yeah, Whitfields has good energy for the team, and, and she's been just catching and shooting all night. Travis Mays going with just nine players here so far. Obviously just five at a time. And right down the middle into lane, free throws coming up for Perry. Well, they have settled down and gotten into their offense now in the second half here three times in a row, and that's opened it up for a quality dribble penetration. All of a sudden, this could be a four-point ball game. SMU's gaining a little confidence with every possession. Foul on Johnson was her third again at the college level. You just get five. Takes it right at Johnson. Perry makes about two-thirds of her free throws. From Duncanville, Texas, former state champion at that powerhouse in the Lone Star State. That one rims out. Cincinnati's lead down to six. Make it fun. One of the concerns that Coach Elliott had was the size of SMU, and that size has caused her to, you know, kind of shoot around it. Whitfield has a couple three-pointers. Perry finds Cash, top of the key. And no jump ball there. Instead, Bearcats strip it away, taking it the other way. And right around two defenders, never giving up on the pursuit of the rim. The layup good for Miller. Yeah, that's kind of the, the worst thing you can do defensively is not get the ball stopped. There were three plate players in the paint for SMU, and no one picked up the ball. You see so many ball handlers just step back when they run in that double team and says she kept going. Got it to the rim and finished. Cash battling. And the Bearcats bring some help with Riser. Both teams are backing out of the offensive boards right now, and so most teams are one and done. Mentioned Mackenzie Adams had a slow start shooting, but that's already her seventh rebound to go with her seven points. And the Bearcats now back to an eight-point advantage. Owens is the kind of player that knows when they need something. And coach said, you know, she just has that managerial kind of ability, and they needed one there, and she just pulled the trigger. I say that, a nine-point lead now for Cincinnati. Shot clock down to three. Dribble to the side, shot off the rim, was in time, but won't fall. And again, determination will lead to free throws coming up for Rogers. Rogers is a good looking sophomore. She's tough, kind of has that Ohio mentality where she's gonna, you know, she's she's a kind of rough and tumble penetrator and she's got a good looking shot. Made both for free throws in the first half. So now 12 for 12 as a sophomore this year. 
still perfect. Good rotation, good finish on that shot. Travis Mays' Mustangs being led by eight points from Whitfield. Only four of the nine Mustangs we've seen have been able to hit a shot from the field. Yeah, every possession counts, and it just, you know, they're bailing out of their shot a little more than they should, but, I mean, they're right there, but they have to take care of every possession. See how they double-team her? Now, now somebody's open. you got to get the ball reversed. And they'll get a foul on the Bearcats. You had both Bradshaw and Collins at 6'6 and 6'5, but neither could give Adams a target to pass out to, and that will send us to a break here in the third quarter. Cincinnati hanging on to lead, a double-digit advantage now here on the road, up by 11 on ADN. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Take a look at some of the upcoming American championships in Olympic sports. We will have right here on the American Digital Network. It all gets started swimming and diving right here in Dallas, hosted by SMU. If you don't have Valentine's Day plans or if you need an excuse, come join us in Dallas February 14th through 17th as uh, all of our ADN crew will be here. The indoor track and field over in Birmingham at the Crossplex to wrap up February. And then you see golf, tennis, softball, outdoor track and field rowing, and baseball to take us through the spring and into the summer, wrapping up this athletic calendar. So all those games will be available, uh, matchups will be available on the American Digital Network. And of course, Points in the paint have loomed large for the Bearcats so far. Well, it has, and it's been on the offensive glass. There's Riser right there getting a couple off the offensive glass. We got Miller right there inside. Riser again with a high-low pass from Johnson. And right now it's 12 to nothing on the in the paint for uh, for Cincinnati. They've enjoyed a 14-0 fast break advantage over SMU. You mentioned the 12-0 in the paint. And so they are not making it difficult on themselves. It's the little things that make the difference. I, I will tell you that SMU, their effort, their their want wantability, you know, the want to please the coach, everything is there. It's just they're not doing the little things right. Uh, you know, they're just not every possession, just the little things count, and they're just doing a few things wrong. Midway through the third quarter, as Smith, the freshman, right next to her head coach, Travis Mays, will get us back under what? Adams with seven points, just one of nine, though, from the floor. Most of it's been done from the free throw line. We go with the two bigs. Ten to shoot for the Mustangs. Kick out to Smith. They got to hit those as they find the open look in the wing, uncontested. And an offensive foul on the Bearcats will give SMU another chance to trim this down to a nine, maybe an eight point deficit. Skip passes are really good against this kind of defense when you have two bigs like they have with SMU 6'6 six, six and 6'5. Six, You've got to get the ball to reverse so you can pin your man and then duck move them and get it inside. And they hold it just a little bit too long and the post just can't 
get their positioning. As the second foul on Owens, only Johnson has three fouls for Cincinnati. Three fouls on Whitfield for SMU. The only concerns for the two teams. Smith into the paint, and this time comes away with a pair. That was a nice looking cut. Haven't seen that kind of cut off the weak side. And a nice little stab in the, in the paint. Points in the paint more accurately here in Dallas. Points into Stain. As another block shot by the sizable post play of Collins. And with that ball not hitting the rim, shot clock is down to nine. And they'll never get a shot off. Even numbers, Adams goes to the rim. And able to strip it away from behind, dual possession. Okay, I'm gonna say that's not fair. I mean, that really is not fair. That was a great take by Adams. The fact that that thing did not go down, it just rolled and went out. It's, it's, it's tough. You're supposed to be able to get, make that at home, aren't you? She's one of 10 from the floor, an uncharacteristic night. Well, she did have to go up against two defenders and split them. And then she probably put a little more spin than she needed on it, and it rolled out. So she, She's just wondering, what is it going to take? Well, it's not going to take more effort. She's got that. It's just going to take better decision making. If I'm hurt halftime, I ask the arena crew to bring a ladder out and just let me drop a few right through the bucket to make sure it all works properly. Well, she's one of the better shooters in the American. She's one of the leading scorers in the country. So, I mean, she's doing a lot of things right, but it's just a tough night. Smith underneath, able to pass out to Collins. Smith out of Highland Park High School, finds her open teammate Reese. A long rebound, transition opportunity, and just a misstep on the dribble as Owens able to recover. Owens, among three Mustangs, whips one out for the open shot, and they're going to say out of bounds. Foot was on the baseline for Riser. Rogers was mad at herself, but that was a good looking shot. Um, and that was a quick transition bucket inside, right back out. Coach talked about it at halftime. I want to get the ball deep. There's Riser, man. She, she, she's a hard working player for them. She's, oh, she's everywhere. It was the 18th three pointer attempted by Cincinnati. They have hit four. And two or three of those were right at the start of the ball game. Not sure that's what Coach drew up. I know at halftime she wanted to get it inside a little bit more. And they'll throw it away with the shot clock down to six. I mean, Riser's 6'1". She's, you know, tall if you think about it, but not when you got somebody 6'6". Six, six. It seems like just throw it up a little higher. Morgan Smith, the freshman, has seen a lot of playing time now here in conference play. She's been one of the first options off of the bench for Travis Mays. And she will pick up defensively here, Owens. Straight away, three, no. And Bradshaw, essentially an uncontested rebound. I do think Bradshaw's done a good job the last few games of giving them really solid minutes. She and Collins both just averaging about four points. Offense is not what they have provided over the years. The two seniors being asked to do a little bit more in the absence of Froling, but it's really just not their game. Seems like any time they do get that high-low going, that something gets called, and that was an offensive push-off by Collins inside. Bradshaw will get a breather along with Adams. Deja Thomas re-emerges off of the bench. You can see Jamel Elliott huddled up with the Bearcats. Well, it's not a high-scoring game, not a great shooting game. I guess more of a defensive battle, if you will. Uh, both teams are, are, you know, not really pushing tempo too much and there have been a few fast break points in the first half but it's really been a quarter court battle and uh, only a nine point game so if SMU can maybe turn it up another notch they could catch up SMU's just one of their last eight shots from the floor so far a two minute drought but with that said Cincinnati on a three minute drought so far well, there is no freshman slump here in terms of adjusting from the high school level to the college game over in Orlando for Masani Kaba. She has kept that smile going from ear to ear for Coach Abe over there. And what a brilliant start it has been for the freshman as Moss was the freshman of the week for this past week. Her performance, including the win over SMU on Saturday. And of course, 
all things clicking for Gino and his group up in Storrs, Connecticut. And you can thank in part to Kia Nurse, your player of the week, shot so well in a week in which UConn went 3-0. Was UConn your upset pick this year in this conference? It, 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 it was, and I'm brilliant, aren't I? As Goings back in the ball game, she played seven minutes in the first half. You heard the maximum number of minutes would be 15 tonight for Goings. After she has missed the last five outings, a long three-pointer. That one almost from Fort Worth off the mark. Reese the other way with numbers. Oh, just a little too casual. As Goings with the steal, and this is going to lead, I was going to say, to an easy two the other way. No such thing. Yeah, just not a great pass. But she said, well, why don't I just uh, <laughs> take it out and shoot it from three? I was just saying, my spot's not in the lane. This is my spot. She has a team-high nine points on four of 11 shooting. Now, if she misses that, that's a poor take. But when you make it, you yeah. know, thank you very much. That's why you featured her at the top of the broadcast. Collins denied as Johnson playing with three fouls stays firmly planted and it leads to another easy two on the other end. All right, that's two quick buckets, you know, it, it, it really, SMU cannot let that happen. That that has to stop. You've got to get back and stop in transition. Largest lead now for Cincinnati. Perry, a little extra effort. Good. Good fake and take. Bearcats can hold for the final shot here in the third quarter. And Kiss won't go off of the window. And the pressure from the Bearcats will keep SMU from ever getting a shot off. It's an 11 point deficit that will stare the Mustangs in the eyes when we move on to the fourth quarter. Cincinnati looking to continue to climb the standings in the American, looking for a road victory in Texas tonight. Potentially strike and saw over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Back inside Moody Coliseum here on the American Digital Network. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you as Cincinnati will take an 11-point lead into the fourth quarter. That's two points fewer than their largest advantage thus far when they led by as many as 13. Let's check back in with Megan Trammell. Well, guys, we talked a little earlier about Cincinnati being orphans at the arena, and I got to catch up with Coach Elliott about it, and she said, yeah, we're in a local Catholic school, and it's a smaller environment, but it makes for a louder atmosphere, so we're actually enjoying it. But she said home is where the heart is, and at fifth and third, when they get through renovating, what she's looking most forward to is that they'll just have the convenience of not getting on a bus every day and having everything in one spot. 
Guys. Yeah, they will look forward to not having to pile into a car and head over for practice, let alone game days. And certainly uh, that will affect attendance as well uh, back when you have a nice facility. And I'll, you mentioned the recruiting boost that will go with it. Now, most coaches have their offices almost right over the court, so it's it's tough when you have to travel to get to practice and to games. There is something, though, about your fans being intimately close right there in a smaller confines, more in tune with a high school gym. They can be more impactful. As long as you can get your fans there. That's a whole other bus. Yep. Johnson looking for another triple. Well, that's an awesome piece of her game. She becomes the fifth different Bearcat to strike from beyond the arc. She's a newcomer of the year in the American last year, so she's not a surprise, but she can do it all. That was the 44th three-pointer she's attempted this year. She has made seven of them. Sticking to it. Well, she's not shy about it. Shot clock down to six. This will be a long two if it goes. It does as Whitfield pulls a pair back, the freshman. Whitfield's four for seven, two for three from three point, doing her job for the team. Two players in double figures, Whitfield with her 10 points and Owens with a game high 11 for the Bearcats. Owens, bottom of your screen right now, will take this hand off. A long two from Owens, not long enough. Good defense by Whitfield. Getting through the screen and, and, and uh, obstructing that shot. Here's your three-point assassin. She's like, I got this. Johnson out of Philadelphia, started her college career at Monroe Junior College. Now the last couple of years with the Bearcats, giving them nine and a half points, six rebounds a night this year as a senior. She said, why not? Three on one at the moment, a little hesitation. Johnson comes flying in, saves it with her hustle, and Bradshaw rejection. And they'll get a foul on the perimeter from Whitfield. Bradshaw a moment ago flexing her muscle. That shows Owen's athleticism there, though. She gets the ball rejected, and she tight ropes the, the sideline right here. Uh, well, not right there, but she tight ropes the sideline here and takes the ball back out. Bearcats lead at, at 12. Bearcats continue to find the open shooter, and for Miller, that's her first successful three now. She's shooting 16%, so why not fire it up? Six different Bearcats have found a lone three-pointer tonight. Bradshaw back to the free throw line in a moment. I think that's maybe one of her first or second touches at the post. And I like it when she touches the ball. Bradshaw's, I think she's capable of scoring down there pretty much at will. She has good balance in there. One thing I want to say about Elliot, though, I think she actually recruits scorers. I mean, all her kids, she doesn't recruit like defensive specialists. Every single one of her kids uh, wants to put that ball up. That helped bridge the gap when Goings missed the last five games. You saw players like Brianna Livingston step in with some opportunities. Same can be said for Genesis Parker. She noted the bench has been the MVP over the past few games, all victories. And while Bradshaw and Collins combined have only taken three shots tonight for SMU. Bradshaw already in double figures rebounding with 11. Cincinnati not really in a hurry. They're going to take their time, get a quality shot. They haven't really taken a lot of bad shots in this game. I could probably put it on one hand. Another quality look here. Nothing but net as it drops through. Bearcats get another three from Miller. 
Like I say, Miller was four of 24 coming into the game from three point. And she's hit two tonight. Two for three, just a lone miss. Deja Thomas has only played 10 minutes tonight as Reese will salvage this possession. Halftime coach said, I think we're going to start hitting them, and she was right. Bearcats fell down. Mustangs can't take advantage. The Mustangs have been chasing the Bearcats since the early going when the Bearcats erased the early 3-0 deficit in this ball game back in the opening quarter. Bearcats have led ever since. And another two from Johnson. She has seven to go with her eight rebounds and four assists. Excellent offensive production by Cincinnati. Three times in a row, getting about eight to ten passes in the quarter court and then finding the hole. Adams a long three. wonder how many of her shots tonight have hit the rim multiple times. Adams one for 12. A lot of pass fakes by Cincinnati. Shot fakes, pass fakes. Jamel Elliott's going to call a timeout with 12 to shoot for the Bearcats. Their lead is up to 20. Largest advantage for Cincinnati. And again, they've won their last three, looking to make it four and a row as they continue this grueling stretch through the American. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Take a look at some of the players who stood out this past week, representatives of the Pirates, the Cougars, the Bulls, Green Wave, and again uh, up there in Wichita, Kansas with the Shockers. A uh, handful of seniors, but a youth movement as well. Always leads to optimism here for what is ahead in the American. Well, talk about optimism. How about the shooting as of late from beyond the arc here in Dallas? Bearcats able to connect with some threes as of late. Well, Johnson pulling the trigger there. Good skip pass there to find Miller open for the three. Another skip pass to Miller, who just strokes it, catches, and says, I got this. They're now 7 of 24 from beyond the arc after a slow start. It has helped them stretch the lead to 20. And we have seen six different Bearcats connect from downtown Dallas. As a team, just really an average three-point shooting team. 29% for the year, not, not, if I looked at their opponents, took more threes than them all year, just not part of their game that they really focus on. But I think because SMU's played, played mostly a 1-2-2, two, two, and they've sagged off these alleged non-shooters, they've been able to get wide open and get in a rhythm and, and fire that stroke down. Well, Jamel Elliott's been without one of her, and actually probably without argument, her best three-point shooter for the past five games in Nakira Goings, who's played 10 minutes, including three here in the second half, as they are trying to get her back in form. Cincinnati will have a couple of home games coming up to try to keep this momentum rolling against both ECU as well as UCF. It'll be a rematch with the Pirates, who they beat in North Carolina by 12 at the end of December in their conference opener. So she took a timeout pretty much to take the ear out of the ball, I would think, but that didn't take it out. So, and oh my gosh, <laughs> that was a front of the rim shot that actually went in. Yeah, Mackenzie Adams did not know that was an option. 
Well, I'm, I'm shocked that she took a timeout and they took that shot. I thought for sure she would say, you know, 12 to 15 passes before you shoot it. The home team is not getting those kind of breaks. I might check the rims, have the uh, janitors check the rims. So Benham now with six points, all six being produced from beyond the arc. A little urgency here for the Bearcats, leading by 23. They have held SMU to just 32 points with four and a half to go here in regulation. Cincinnati already has climbed to join the top four in the standings in the American. That'll be quite a contest with UCF for third place behind the two top 25 programs. Cash again, she is money from that spot. Yep, they took the ball away from her, uh, away on the weak side and reversed it and she just caught and fired. And again, getting her third career start now. Eight points to show for it today. Splits the defenders, but cannot come away with points. Kick out to Reese. Perry. Is able to shake free from the double team, and the second bite at the apple good for Kiera Perry. Good effort by Perry. We're back within 19 for SMU, but again, that clock is very much on the side of Cincinnati here on the road today. Yeah, I think Coach is not too happy with how quickly they're shooting, so she's going to spread them out a little bit. SMU will have a short road trip to Houston. Again, Houston's playing its home games this year on the campus of Texas Southern as the former Hoffines Pavilion is being renovated. Should be another great venue in the American starting next year. And this will be a three. It is good for Cash. Why not? Why not just catch and shoot it at this point? You gotta, you gotta put some points on the board. That has not been a part of her game. But nobody was going to pick her up. Bearcats lead down to 16. That's how you work the clock and come away with points. Owens with three more. From downtown, she just doesn't matter. I'll confirm that three-pointer a moment ago by John Asia Cash, just the second of her young career. But she quickly jumps from an 11% three-point shooter to a 20% three-point shooter. Meanwhile, slightly less surprised that Owens is able to tally the three. We'll keep it here inside Moody Coliseum. As Cincinnati lead is at 19 with two minutes to go. And you have to like the way this program continues to improve under Jamel Elliott now in her ninth year. With that said, she had to almost reinvent her staff this year. Last year, Jeff Lanier came on as the recruiting coordinator. This year, Tamisha Augustine and Eddie Benton joined her staff as her top assistants. Benton, the former great point guard at Duquesne. Augustine, a big picture mindset of the bright future for Cincinnati. And the future gets even brighter, you see, with number 50 there in the Kira Goins. Well, I think Elliott's got to be thrilled to, to any time you can get a road win in the American, it's big. She talked about the first game that they had on the road, ECU. Uh, they won at ECU. That gave their, her team some confidence. And now they're coming here. I, I don't care who struggles, how you struggle. It's still hard to win on the road. I think right now for SMU, they just kind of let it get away from them again. They took some poor shots. Coach addressed it at halftime, but they, they still, the effort's there, but they're, they're shooting against two people, and they're really not getting a quality rhythm. I mentioned what's coming up ahead for these two teams. You see what's coming up for us as UCF Saturday ventures to take on the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. That'll be an afternoon contest, and then back to another midweek matchup over on the East Coast between the Shockers and Pirates. Again, we will also factor in the Cougars, the Tigers, as well as the Owls down the stretch through February. We'll have a few more games after that even to take us right up to the conference tournament up in Connecticut. 
I'm excited to see Houston a couple times. We're going to see Wichita again. Uh, these are kind of the unsung guys that have come up and into the ranks and, be, you know, made themselves a factor. You just don't know year to year who's going to emerge. And it's great players make great teams, and these are the players that are stepping up. Those two, these Bearcats and UCF will be vying for uh, one of the top seeds to help out their cause for a deep run in the conference tournament this year, along with USF and UConn. Absolutely, and it's, you know, it's anybody's race. It's just, it's just uh, which one continues to do the little things right as we talked about tonight. Coach Travis shouldn't hang his head, though. You know, these are, these are, he's taking what he's got. He's, he's trying to do the best that he can with them. Um, he is a, he, he talked about, I said, what kind of coach are you? He's a run and gun kind of coach. Well, it's hard to run and gun with, you know, six, eight and six, six players. You know, you really need to run more quarter court action. So he's, he's got to get his own players in there and, you know, slowly start playing his kind of style that he knows how to coach. That'd be a lot of Dallas area elementary and middle schools whose teachers are being told that the dog ate the homework. Exactly. After uh, no better way to spend a school night than here taking in some basketball in the American. I think Whitfield's had a really nice night for them. Uh, Bradshaw has done a great job. Obviously, you know, Adams had an off shooting night, uh, but she had a lot of attention paid to her. So I, I can't say I'm, it's her, you know, I'm blaming her. You know, it's basically they took her out and other people were open. Cincinnati led by seven at the half as the little scoop reverse won't go. And, well, she got her own rebound. And there, again, the ball never hit the rim. Shot clock violation despite the great hustle you see there from Brianna Livingston. The Canadian Livingston, a freshman, is one of those who really stepped up in the absence of going over the past couple of weeks. And first time for us to see her tonight. And of course, I really haven't talked about Cash as much as I, I should because Cash is, you know, double digits now. She and Whitfield double digits for the team. And I've been talking about somebody stepping up. There's Cash again. Pretty good looking shot there from the top of the key. Cash with the team high 11. Game high is 14 for Owens, who's been helped by Miller with 10. Riser with 10 rebounds for Cincinnati, 11 boards for Bradshaw of SMU, who came off the bench today and is on the bench at the moment. And they'll get a walk on Cincinnati's and Deja Puckett, the freshman from Georgia. Anytime you can give your freshman some minutes on the road, that's exciting for them. And she's a pretty good looking freshman. Michaela Porter, a freshman, now joins the mix. She's out of Pittsburgh from the Obama Academy. Cincinnati foul on number 11. And the foul is on Rogers. Well, Adams is still out there, still going to work. Five of her seven points have come from the free throw line tonight. She has seven points, eight rebounds in 33 minutes. And Adams, you will rarely spot her just standing around. Constantly working regardless of what the score is. Now six of seven from the charity stripe as the former UConn Husky, Jamel Elliott, looks on. Always makes the plane ride a little bit better when you can get a road win. I mentioned the middle school in D.C. renamed their court and gym after Jamel Elliott. She was inducted into their third ever middle school hall of fame. I imagine she'll probably be inducted into a few more as she grows older. Yeah, she has been successful at just about every level. I'm not sure how many middle schools have a hall of fame, but that is saying something. That they inducted six this year, including Coach Elliott. But she was the only one to have her name emblazoned on the court back in her old stomping grounds. Well, she was the number two career rebounder in UConn history. That kind of tells you what her thoughts are about rebounding and what kind of, kind of players that she actually recruits. If you set a record at UConn, you don't expect it to last. 
You really don't. And I guess, I mean, I'm reading this, but, I mean, she's number 11 in career scoring at 1,387 points. So that's not too bad either. Um, you know, UConn, I mean, this is, she helped them create the dynasty back then, and they've just continued that dynasty. But for, here's my other point. For, for Gino to have her be on his staff, that tells me everything I need to know because he's, he's fairly particular about who he hangs around. And, you know, she's scouting for USA. Yeah, you're referring to when she's the court coach yep. for his uh, USA squad. I mean, that, that's a big, big thing that I would be bragging about. Step back three, no. Into the lap of Cash. She'll go to the free throw line looking to add two more to 11 points already tonight. I think that's what you have to start looking at is, you know, how can we just keep cultivating and players like Cash and, you know, the future of the program. And, and she is the future of the program. So, you know, even though it's a little, it's, it's a bit of a tough year right now for SMU, there's good spots to it. And this is one of them. 11 points already a career high for the freshman. And she'll miss both. Of course, because we're talking about her. Ears are burning. Bearcats not obligated to fire off a shot. Stick around. We'll have a chance to check back in with Megan, who will have the opportunity to talk to Coach Jamel Elliott, as well as one of the top Bearcats tonight. We'll step aside first as Bearcats now have won four in a row. They take the show on the road here in Dallas and win by 18 over the Mustangs. And the all-time series even at four games apiece between these two American programs. When we come back, we'll hear from the victorious Bearcats. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Mustangs fall this evening here at home. They'll look to get back on the winning track when they have the chance to travel to Houston this weekend. But Victoria's head coach, Jamel Elliott's with our Megan Trammell. Let's check in with those two. Coach, one of the things you wanted to do tonight was hone in on Adams, and you limited her to one of her lowest scoring nights. What's your evaluation of your defense? Well, I thought our defense played well the whole game. This has probably been our best defensive effort all year. You know, we had to do two things. We had to guard Adams, and we had to guard the high-low. And it's hard to do both, and we did it for, for 40 minutes. So we didn't score a whole lot of points. It was a bomb burner, but uh, we grinded it out enough to win the ball game, and I'm proud of my players. And this lengthens your winning streak to four. What does that do for the confidence of your locker room? You know what? We just take it one game at a time. We try not to look at ahead. We try not to look behind. We just try to stay in the moment. And by doing that, we've been able to come out and execute and focus for 40 minutes. And everybody that plays, I tell them, you can do something to help us win. And everybody that plays has. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Angel, tonight you're staring at a double-double. How are you able to be so efficient? Um, well, every day my coaches tell me just to be aggressive and, like, crash your boards. I mean, because the game, like, any game, oh, Lord, you just messed up. I'm so sorry. But um, we just, in general, in practice, we just focus on crashing the boards, and that's just what we do in the game. We just hustle. She knows every, we play a lot of people on the bench, so as long as you hustle while you're out there, you're going to get a break. So that's the main thing we try to do. And Goings gets back in your lineup tonight. How does that affect you guys? It's a very positive spark. Um, she was like our leading scorer. She can really shoot. So that's like one of our best shooters on the team. And so it just feels good for her to come back out and be able to play. I mean, it's not her best game, but it's just her being out there was just great. Congratulations. Go enjoy the win. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, thank you, Megan. The sophomore Angel Riser finishes just shy of that double-double. Eight points, ten rebounds, three assists. Bearcats assists all around. Great ball movement, great teamwork, collective effort leads to their fourth straight victory when Jamel Elliott does in fact look ahead on the schedule. Home sweet home against ECU and UCF over the next seven days. Big thank you to our entire AD and crew in Dallas for Angela Beck, Megan Trammell, I'm Lincoln Rose. The Bearcats take this one 58 to 40. The victory over SMU.